Hello Internet, Sky here, and today our Boeing Marathon brings us a somewhat exotic guest. Let's take a look. Boeing 717 is a twin-engine, single-aisle airliner, produced between 1998 and 2006. The plane is quite unusual. Its unusualness is noticeable almost immediately. 10 seconds on the screen and the thought occurs. This Boeing does not seem like a Boeing. Boeing 717 is an airliner with, let's just say, quite a difficult fate. In the late 1950s, Douglas Aircraft Company created its flagship model, a four-engine DC-8 airliner. In 1963, the medium-haul DC-9 joined its big brother. It was a completely new and quite successful aircraft. By the time of the end of production in 1982, the sky had seen 976 planes of this model. In 1980, McDonnell Douglas created the MD-80, which was technically the next generation of DC-9. The aircraft was heavier, had an extended fuselage and an improved wing. The trend was obvious. The McDonnell Douglas planes were becoming larger with each generation. However, the company decided not to let go of the market of small 100-seat jet airliners and initiated the program for the creation of such aircraft. The economic crisis of 1980s did not spare the aviation industry. The project of a 100-seat aircraft was closed. Attempts to create a reduced version of the MD-80 had also failed. So in this decade such an airplane never appeared. Only in 1991 the project was restarted with the Index MD-87-105. The name speaks for itself. The Index 105 means 105 seats. In the Paris Air Show, the project was officially announced under the name MD-95. As a model, this aircraft was considered a step below the MD-80 and a replacement of aging DC-9. But the guys from Douglas were still unable to catch their luck, so to speak. Some of the traditional buyers of the airliners, such as SAS Scandinavian Airlines, replaced DC-9 with Boeing 737-600. The production also had some problems. McDonnell Douglas cooperated with the Chinese. For the local market, there was a licensed production of the MD-80 in Shanghai. But this time it did not go well. Instead of the planned 150 new aircraft, a contract was signed for the production of just 40 in a cargo version. And even then the new MD-95 was only half of them. To reduce costs in the homeland, the company even planned a transfer of production from California to Texas. The authorities of California had to work pretty hard to get this decision cancelled. Now the question that a viewer of this video may want to ask. I am telling the story of Boeing 717 as a part of the Boeing Marathon. So why the hell am I talking about McDonnell Douglas with its MD-95? Just a little more, I promise. All these tortures with production and sales for the company continued, and in this story a happy ending never happened. The chapter about Boeing began in August 1997, when the company from Seattle merged with McDonnell Douglas. All the experts of the industry were confident that now everyone will forget about MD-95. However, surprisingly for them, Boeing decided to continue the development. Naturally, the aircraft received a new name, Boeing 717. This model was quite suitable one step below the 737. Assembly of the planes began in 1997. In the summer of 1998, the plane was rolled out, and in September it made its maiden flight. Already in 1999, after receiving the FAA certificate, the first airliners were supplied to AirTran Airways. Boeing's decision not to close the MD-95 project had good results. Early operators of Boeing 717 were satisfied with its reliability and performance. New orders followed. In fact, in the beginning of the 21st century, Boeing 717 was the best regional jetliner. The new Rolls-Royce BR-715 engines were reliable and very easy to maintain, as well as the entire aircraft. For example, the sea check maintenance procedure for Boeing 717 was only taking 3 days, whereas for DC-9 it required 3 weeks. In addition, Boeing actively used the important trump card of the 717s. 
It was strongly unified with the rest of the McDonnell Douglas airliners, which were still very widespread around the world. For example, in order to switch pilots from the MD-80 to the Boeing 717, it was enough to pass a two-week retraining course. For a course of mastering a new airliner, this feels like mere seconds. The passenger cabin of the plane is designed to accommodate 134 passengers. There is another difference of this aircraft from the other Boeings. The cabin has a layout of 5 seats in a row. The rest Boeing single aisle planes have cabins with 6 seats in a row. Boeing rather actively promoted this aircraft, especially among the airline's operators of the old DC-9. The company was working on an extended version of the 717-300, but the project was closed, as this aircraft began to compete with the Boeing 737-700. However, the basic Boeing 717 was a great addition to the model 737-600, the youngest in the NG generation. The 717s showed itself well on regional lines, while the 737-600 was very effective on medium haul routes. In 2001, there was a significant event in the history of aviation production. The volumes of orders for the younger models were so large recently, that Boeing became bold enough to start its first conveyor system. In fact, a conveyor belt was created, like in the car factories, but instead of little hatchbacks there were airliners worth tens of millions of dollars. Two planes were produced this way, Boeing 717 and Boeing 737. The results were impressive. The production period had decreased, the cost of the aircraft fell, and the supply volumes were raised. And then the September happened. The September 11, 2001 terrorist attacks led to a serious crisis in air transportation and the aviation industry, especially in the USA, and the glorious Model 717 suffered the most. Orders for this aircraft fell drastically. In addition, the Canadian Bombardier and the Brazilian Embraer entered the market of 100-seat jet aircraft. The end of the program began in 2003, when Boeing lost the tender of Air Canada for $2.7 billion, assuming the replacement of their fleet of DC-9 aircraft. Airline chose the newest Embraer E-Jet and Bombardier CRJ-200. In 2005, Boeing officially announced the plans to stop the production. The last 156 Boeing 717 was delivered to AirTran Airways in the spring of 2006. Ironically, this airline was both the starting and the finishing customer of the model. The aircraft also became the last production of the plant in Long Beach, and the end of the design tradition of McDonnell Douglas in the civilian sector. In total, during the period from 1998 to 2006, 156 Boeing 717 planes were produced. In 2017, nearly 154 were still in operation in five airlines. The largest number of aircraft belongs to Delta Airlines, 91 planes. It's worth mentioning one more interesting fact, flight safety. For the whole period of operation, at least until 2018, out of the 150 aircraft, not one has been involved in a serious accident that caused the death of people. The worst thing that happened to them is landing without the front landing gear, but even then only the frontal fuselage section was damaged. Another time at the airport, another aircraft touched his wing at the parking lot, and once again some psycho tried to hijack Boeing 717. And that's all for two decades of active operation. Not bad for a half Douglas, half Boeing. And this is it for today. Subscribe and comment below what you think about this airplane. Fast flights and soft landings to you.